This trip started with a tweet. I was following this account on Twitter where they post pictures of abandoned places and the account had been posting fakes for a while and I sort of got into the habit of checking if the pictures were real or if they were fake. And I was certain that this picture of a cave was computer animated. It turns out it wasn't. It was actually the world's largest cave. This was to be my and Thomas's next adventure. Thomas was the guy who went with me to Peru and we started the trip by flying to Ho Chi Minh City. Thomas had already been in Asia for a month or two when we came there, so we met up in, in Ho Chi Minh. I didn't really get a lot of pictures in Ho Chi Minh because we were sort of jet lagged. After Ho Chi Minh, we went up to Dong Hoi. There we met up with the rest of the group and we stayed there for a night to, where we made sure we had the right equipment with us and then we sort of took off for the caves. The trek started with a bus ride followed by a pretty steep descent down to uh, through a jungle uh, where we passed by a minority village in Vietnam. stopped there for a short, short break and then we continued on to the caves. When you're trekking through the jungle here, you'll be going through a lot of water. Most of it is knee high and above, so expect to get wet. After about three or four hours hiking, we ended up at a cave called Hang En. You come into this huge opening and there's this sandy beach with water next to the sandy beach. Worth mentioning here is that the food on this trip is amazing. The Oxialis team has a lot of orders taking care of us and there's a lot of good food to be had. After sleeping one night in Hangen, we continued back into the backdrop of Hangen.
we passed through to the other side, the enormity of the cave was obvious. After Hang'an, we went through the jungle again. Now we followed a stream and then eventually went up into the jungle. And we're now going to Songdong, the world's largest cave. Before entering the cave we had lunch at a camp just outside the cave and here we took on climbing gear and started to descend into the cave. There are areas in the cave where you can walk normally and there are areas in the cave where you sort of have to mind your step and make sure you don't, don't fall down to a side or get dragged away by water. Usually in the water you have a line that you can hold on to and it, it's quite good to hold on to that line because you don't want to get dragged away by the water. On this first day in Songdong, we come and we see the view that actually brought me to the cave initially. The, it's this huge cave opening where you have a sand beach up inside the cave. There's actually clouds forming inside the cave opening. And you can see the jungle in the distance where the cave collapsed thousands of years ago. Most of the trekking through the cave was quite easy. There were some passages that were a bit stressful but I would say that most of the 
effort going into the trek itself is more around your own psyche than your actual physical condition. However, there are some parts of the cave where you'll need to crawl and squeeze through tight areas. And this can be... I'm not quite sure how to describe it, so I'm going to let the following video sequence describe it for me. stones move around every year during the rain season so the path through the cave is different each year. two parts of the cave that's caved in a few thousand years ago and in these cave-ins there there's now a small jungle with unique vegetation. After crawl crawling through the stone rubble we uh, came up into the first jungle session. You can get some beautiful pictures here. From the second collapsed part, you can see down into the last part of the cave. Uh, this is where our third camp is and uh, where we'll, we will spend the night. There's, uh, it's also on a sort of beach area, but the, it's not sand that the tents are set up. But it's actually gypsum, a natural uh, uh, source of gypsum. The last part of the cave is actually still a little bit water filled, so we take boats to get to the innermost part of the cave, the end of the cave. It's called the Great Wall of Vietnam because suddenly there is a great wall that just towers up inside the cave. What's interesting though is that the water here, it's crystal clear, it's super blue and so still. So it's a really surreal experience of paddling along this water that is just so calm.
At this point, I was so tired of being wet that I was a little bit scared of toppling over and falling into the water, which sort of ruined the experience a little bit for me because I just changed into dry clothes and I didn't want to get wet again. a lot faster coming out of the cave. We did that trek in just a few hours. We stopped for snacks on several locations to make sure that everyone had the energy to get up into the bus. And the roughest part of this day is to go back up to the road because as we came down, it was just downhill, but now we have to walk up the same distance. It's quite a, a significant amount of, of altitude that you have to, to cover, but at the top, there's a cold beer waiting for us. And then we took a flight north to Hanoi where we picked up our friend Henrik. We just uh, stopped in the airport because then we went south again back to Nha Trang where we had the plan to go diving together with Henrik. We also found this downhill day tour where we went biking. We went up to the top of this really, really long road that went through the jungle and through the mountain areas down to Nha Trang. Diving and resting up in Natrang, we went back to Ho Chi Minh City, where Thomas, Henrik and I went on a street food tour. So Vietnamese street food is actually quite famous, it's really good. The combination of the Asian cuisine with the traditional French cuisine that the French colonists brought with them makes for some really interesting flavors. After the street food tour, we went on a trip into the Mekong Delta. This trip was sort of a, an arranged classic tourist trip, which meant that coming from the cave experience, this was sort of a, a letdown for me. 
And then we went our different ways as uh, Thomas and Henrik went to Burma to continue their vacation and my vacation had to end and I had to come back to work. 